What's going on, guys? It is Brian here from the Healthy Scratch.ca, also known as Bobo from the Bushy and Bobo podcast. Uh, we're having a little fun today and going in to, uh, to take a look at something uh, with first overall picks. Uh, what I mean by that is Owen Power has officially said that he's going back to Michigan for this upcoming year. And Buffalo fans are, I've, I've heard both, both sides. I've heard, why isn't he coming now? Why, why, did, why, 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 why? I don't know how many more times I can say why. Um, and then I've heard the other side where is, great, our team is an absolute dumpster right now. So let him play another year at Michigan. Um, first off, my thoughts on that is, know what? I agree. Let him go back to Michigan. Your team is in shambles. There's disagreements and arguments and conflict between management, players. The fans are all pissed. Your captain, Jack Eichel, is absolutely just baffled with what's going on here, and he wants out. He sent a tweet a couple out, or yes, or whenever the once Power announced that he was going back, and it was the emoji, just a emoji or whatever it is. Um, but it is what it is. Like I said, Owen Power, he, he was only a freshman last year, right? So um, let him let him play another year of, of university hockey while Buffalo tries to figure out what's going on. Um, and then something that sort of piqued my mind was, okay, how many in the last X amount of years, how many first overall picks did not go to the NHL, right? The first overall, not first round, first overall, did not go to the NHL right away. And then I'm like, all right, what type of time frame do I want to use? And I want like, you know what? Let's go back to when I was born. I was born in 89. So we're going back 31, almost 32, 31, 32 years here uh, from 2021 in reverse order. So 2021 back to 1989. And including Owen Power, there's eight guys. So... Owen Power, obviously the defenseman taken first overall. This last year at Michigan, uh, as a freshman, played 26, uh, 26 games and had 16 points. Three goals, 13 assists, perfect. He made the all Big Ten second team and the all Big Ten freshman team. He also played the 2021 uh, World Championships for Team Canada. The youngest guy on the team, 18 years old, playing with guys that are in the NHL or guys uh, professional with men and Canada obviously won gold power played 10 games there three assists not too shabby uh, as a start but you got that taste of that uh, uh, of that <laughs> I was going to say it was not going to sound right there uh, but you got that first uh, playing with, with 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 men rather than than uh, university and 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 uh, and kids or boys, whatever you want to say. Um, so again, from, from 2021 to 1989, eight guys, Owen Power was the first drafted by Buffalo, but he's going back to the University of Michigan. Prior to him, we had to go back 15 years. Uh, so 2006, the St. Louis Blues are on the clock and they draft from the U.S. National Development Program, Eric Johnson. Um, defenseman now for the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, Johnson in, in his career so far, 780 games played, 304 points, 224 assists. Great. Where he ended up going, though, uh, to play college hockey, he committed to college hockey. So he went to the University of Minnesota, played one year there, played 41 games, had 24 points, four goals, 20 assists. The following year, in 2007-2008 season, he plays for St. Louis. He plays 69 games with them and gets 33 points. Uh, he plays one game for Peoria Riverman, the AHL affiliate, but nothing there. Uh, but Johnson, like I said, 33 points in 69 games in his rookie year. He made the Young Stars game. Not a Calder, not in the Calder running there. Not on the all-rookie team, but so far, not a bad career. Uh, let's, then let's go back to 2004. First overall pick, Alex Ovechkin. Ever heard of him? 
Uh, the only reason he didn't go jump to the NHL right away is because that was the lockout year. Guarantee if there's no lockout, Alex, Alex Ovechkin is playing in Washington and lighten up the league. Uh, since there was no year, he went back to play in Russia for uh, Dynamo Moscow there. Uh, in that year, he played with Moscow, 37 games, 26 points. Low for Ovi, right? Uh, 13 goals, 13 assists. However, his rookie year, 05 06, 81 games, 106 points, 52 goals. Yeah, that, that's saying something. Uh, Ovi, obviously, all rookie team. He made the NHL all for, like first team, and he was obviously the Calder winner. Uh, throughout his career, there was a, well, 1,197 games. He has 1,320 points, 730 goals, 590 assists. Is he going to break Gretzky's goal record? That's what everyone's sort of watching here. He's over a point a game in his career. So uh, those are those are the two guys in, in, in this century, in the, in the in the 21st century here that. Uh, that we'd have to look at first overall guys that did not play their draft year or their their initial rookie year, or if you know what I mean there, their, their draft year, they didn't play their, their season uh, in the NHL. So if you want to use that as a comparison, that's not too bad. But I said I wanted to go back to 1989. So we still have a few other guys here. And the nice thing is one, two, three of them are defensemen. There's five more, three of them are defensemen. Uh, which is what you want to sort of, if you not really compare it, but a defenseman since Owen Powers, a defenseman. Uh, we're going back to 1996. The Ottawa Senators are on the clock, and they're a newer team, and so they're they're garbage. So they need to draft something that the that new spark plug, that new that new guy, and they hit it. They hit. They draft Chris Phillips. Uh, played his whole career in Ottawa. He, what 1,179 games, uh, 288 points, not never a uh offensive defenseman, always like a role, good role players, but the, the numbers of games played don't lie. Uh, 217 assists in that as well. So Phillips ended up going back to the WHL, the Western Hockey League, and he split time originally with playing with Prince Albert with the Raiders. Uh, Played 32 games there, 26 points, uh, three goals, 23 assists. Then gets dealt to the Lethbridge Hurricanes, plays 26 games there, gets another 22 points, uh, four goals, 18 assists. So total in the WHL in his last year, uh, 58 games, 48 points. However, the following year, he plays in Ottawa, 97-98. He puts up 72, uh, 72 games, sorry, and 16 points. So make, making that adjustment there. Um, the reason his numbers may be low is because the prior, uh, no, that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> I tried to transition this so, so nicely, but, but I ended up failing. I apologize. The, so the, the, the year prior was the 1995 draft and the senators again, uh, had the number one overall pick and they chose Brian Burrard, another defenseman, uh, Brian Burrard ends up going back to play uh, junior hockey in the Ontario Hockey League. He was playing with the Detroit Junior Red Wings, who rebrand and make themselves the Detroit Whalers, go to become the Plymouth Whalers, and then the Flint Firebirds. Anyways, in his year back in junior, or Brian, before we even go into his junior, his career, out of all these guys here, he has the most uh, underwhelming one. 619 games, uh, 323 points. But 247 assists of those. So he's taken first overall uh, by Ottawa, but he goes to plays back in, in Detroit or in the OHL here uh, for, for a year. Uh, he plays 56 games. And in those 56 games, he gets a defenseman. He has 89 points. That's, in, that's amazing. 31 goals, 58 assists. Uh, not too bad, right? Sanders fans getting excited. He gets dealt. Uh, he ends up going to play the 96, 97. He gets dealt before the next season starts. Uh, and he makes his debut in 96, 97 with the New York Islanders. He plays a whole 80, he plays an 82 game season with them and he gets 48 points. 48 points for a bad defenseman rookie year, not too bad. Actually, it wasn't so, it was pretty good for him. He got the all, he was on the all rookie team and he won the Calder. Go figure. Um, so not too bad. Can you imagine though, Brian Burrard stayed there with, uh, 
uh, stayed in Ottawa, had him and Chris Phillips there together, wouldn't be too bad. But if they're going to go with one of those defensemen that uh, that panned out in the round in the long run, obviously made sense. Look good for Ottawa there with Phillips. Um, so you can't complain. And we're, we're on a string here. So we did the 96 with Phillips, 95 with Burrard, and 1994. This is this rounds out our defensemen. Uh, I remember this draft was one of the first ones I actually sort of remember and had some excitement about because of the buzz who went first overall. And it was Ed Jovanovsky, uh, local Windsor, Ontario boy, and played for the Spitz. Didn't start playing hockey till he was like, he was a late bloomer. I want to say like 10, 12, somewhere in there. So let's say even 10. So from 10 to 18, so eight years of only playing hockey or whatever, uh, eight years of hockey, and then you're going first overall, not too shabby. Uh, Jovanovski's career also, hell of a career. 1,128 games, 500 points on the dot. Not, not bad at all. Uh, he ends up going though back to back to Windsor after getting drafted first overall to play for the Spitz one more year, uh, 50 games and 65 points. Another over a point a game for a defense with 23 goals, 42 assists. Uh, following year, uh, he goes to Florida, that 95 96 season, and he plays 70 games with the Panthers, 21 points. He ends up getting, he's on the all rookie team, and he was actually a, a runner up for the Calder. So, that's, uh, that's not too bad there at all either. Two more guys. Because I wanted to go back to 89. 89. So we're going now to, to 1991. We're going, we're running with two forwards as well. Uh, so 1991. Uh, the Quebec Nordiques are on the clock. And they want to pick first round. Also, sidebar. Quebec Nordiques. Are they going to be making a comeback after next year? Who knows? Arizona doesn't, or Glendale doesn't want to do uh, do business with the NHL on this year-to-year contract. So I, I can see Quebec pe- people in Quebec and Nord- Nordiques fans licking their chops at the, getting that franchise. Back to where we were, whatever side we were on. Anyways, 1991, Quebec Nordiques on the clock. Who do they take? They take a guy whose career, I believe, was cut short. Still had a hell of a career. And that guy is Eric Lindros. Eric Lindros, best time, best uh, known for his time on the Flyers. I know he played for the Leafs, Stars, Rangers, um, but mainly the Flyers. Uh, 760 games, 865 points. Not bad at all. Hall of Famer. Yeah, he is. Uh, he didn't want to play in Quebec, though. So what, do they, what does he do? He goes back and, and plays... Uh, for two teams, he goes. He was playing junior hockey with with the Oshawa Generals of the OHL, Ontario Hockey League. And he was also playing for the Canadian national team. Uh, so in thirteen games, with like when he goes back to Oshawa, he plays thirteen games. He gets thirty one points, nine goals, twenty two assists. Not not too bad at all, right? Plays with the Canadian national team for twenty four games, gets thirty five points there, nineteen and sixteen. Great. He gets traded, goes to Philly. 92-93, Flyers fans get to see Lindros put up 75 points in 61 games, and he makes the all-rookie team. Great. Said, who knows what his career could have been, cut short by injury, but not bad at all. And finally, we go to 1989. I'm probably a couple of months away from being born, uh, but anyways, that, the, the Quebec Nordiques are on the clock again and they take the first european to get drafted first overall in a guy named matt sundin sundin previously played for uh naka hk in the swiss like second league uh then he got drafted by the nordiques he ended up playing another year in sweden this time he goes to their premier like their main league their premier league there, playing for jur gardens if that year in jur gardens he put he plays 34 games and gets 18 points 10 goals, 8 assists, no problem. The following year, 1990-1991, he's playing on Quebec, 80 games, 59 points. That's a solid year. And obviously throughout his career with Quebec, with Toronto, and then his time in Vancouver, 
1,346 games, 1,349 points, point a game guy, just over actually. So not too shabby. So Owen Power, if you want to take a look, like I said, Johnson and Ovechkin are the, well, Johnson is the guy I sort of look at. Uh, great college career, or not college career, I should say, because he only played one year there, in a solid year. Uh, his first NHL year, it was a little shaky, like not shaky, still put up 33 points in 69 games. And he's never been that stud defenseman that anyone talks about, but he's a solid defenseman. His numbers don't lie. Again, 304 points in 780 games. You're almost getting a point every three, two, three games out of him. So just under, yeah, every second or third game, you're getting a point out of him. And again, Owen Power, he, he only played 26 games with Michigan last year as a freshman and 16 points. He's only gotten bigger, uh, stronger, faster, more skilled. He's going to, he's going to, like, I don't know how many games the NCAA say he's playing 26 this year. I, I think he easily has, has almost like a, a point a game guy. He's uh, Michigan has, has a solid team. They have Hugh, uh, Luke Hughes coming in there too. Uh, another, I think I, I went on, when I went on the University of Michigan website for their hockey uh, not too long ago, I think they have like set, uh, six or seven, maybe eight guys that are drafted. And uh, they, have, they have a solid looking team. Again, Buffalo fans, don't worry that he's going back to that he's going back to play another year of college hockey. He had a short season last year because of everything that's going on in the pandemic. He's gonna he will play in Buffalo. He will be that cornerstone guy. I know they've tried it with Eichel, Ristolainen, Dalin, Rasmus Dalin, Dalin. Why did I say Dalin? Um, and they've tried making things work. They tried bringing in Taylor Hall to patch things and try to make it work and it hasn't worked, but this is the guy you're going to build around. This is your, your cornerstone for your franchise. Don't rush him. Don't mess this up, Ottawa management. Ottawa fans, or uh, Ottawa management, Buffalo fan management. Um, Buffalo fans, be, be patient. I know it's been years and years and years of, of suffering and between the play on the ice and then having the worst jersey with the buffa slug and you had the success in like the those, those late 90s teams like the I know it's been a long time since then and yes Brett Hall's foot was in the crease on that goal but that's that's where we need to get you guys back to and this is the guy to help you get help get you there let him take a year like we've seen from these guys in the past other seven guys it works out for you don't worry about it let him enjoy one more year. Let him have fun in front of people actually playing at the arena, like in front of fans at Michigan. I heard it's a great environment. I've never been to, to Yost Arena, but I've heard it's a great time, a great atmosphere. He will play in Buffalo. I'm not afraid that he's not, but you got to give him one more year while management figures it out this year. Anyways, that's what I wanted to do today. Just a little fun, uh, fun little uh, video on that. Be sure to check us out on healthyscratch.ca. We're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Bushy and Bobo podcast on, on the uh, podcasting platforms like Spotify, Apple, Google, obviously YouTube. And, uh, and yeah, the best way though, healthyscratch.ca is to check all that out. Please let me know your comments on that. What do you think is going to happen? Is Owen Power going to, uh, is it a mistake for him going back? Is it, is it great for him going back? Uh, what's going to happen when he makes the jump to the NHL? What's going to happen with Buffalo? What do you think of these other guys? Again, Johnson, Ovechkin, Phillips, Berard, Jovanovsky, Lindros, Sundin. Not a bad list of names there. Anyways, I'm out. Have a great weekend. Take it easy. Bobo gone.